I have a pretty good feeling. What it boils down to is pretty much enslaving. And, and I'm consciously saying the word enslaving, enslaving all the people all around the world. There will be a few uh, privileged um, that do not have to eat bugs, that will still be able to fly, still own a car, and will still be allowed to leave the immediate area where they live in and not be you know, subjected to a climate lockdown, which is what we're actually talking about right now, 15 minutes neighborhoods as a, as a, a word here. But uh, they're a part of, of some privileged, uh, but all of us here, every one of us, I mean included, we will be subjected to their rules all in the name of saving the planet, you know. Well, Ms. Anderson, thank you so much for making time uh, to talk with me. Now, of course, you became famous, especially in this country last year when you condemned uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. You said he was a disgrace to democracy that it would have been more appropriate for Mr. Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, to address this House according to Article 144, an article which was specifically designed to debate violations of human rights, democracy, and the rule of law, which is clearly the case with Mr. Trudeau. Then again, a Prime Minister who openly admires the Chinese basic dictatorship who tramples on fundamental rights by persecuting and criminalizing his own citizens as terrorists just because they dared to stand up to his perverted concept of democracy should not be allowed to speak in this house at all. Mr. Trudeau, you are a disgrace for any democracy. Please spare us your presence. Thank you. First of all, why did you say that? Well, um, a prime minister that is, um, you know, taking offense to the fact that his citizens are standing up to him and uh, criticizing uh, the measures he took and are opposing his policies and he slams down on them uh, by freezing his bank accounts and you know labeling them with any, any kind of name in the book and that is not what you do in a democracy that is the the, the stuff that uh, dictatorships are made of through this pandemic is by getting everyone vaccinated and the overwhelming majority, close to 90% of Canadians, have done exactly that. The small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing do not represent the views of Canadians who have been there for each other. That's why I took that stand. And Justin Trudeau should be ashamed of his, himself. He is not a Democrat. Um, he is utterly disgusting. And he is a disgrace to democracy, as I said back then. And I stand by that uh, today. And we know from about eight years ago, he actually professed his great admiration for the basic dictatorship of China in terms of getting things done, whatever that means. The level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China, um, because their you know, basic dictatorship. What do you think he means by that? And, and what do you think that there was a person who was going to be the leader of a Western democracy admiring Chinese um, dictatorship? You know, to be frank, I do not what is admirable about that regime. I mean, we've all seen how the people have been treated. Um, they cannot ride a bus anymore if the government says no. They cannot go to work anymore if the government says no. And the reasons uh, the Chinese government says no, they might, you know, it's just minor things. It, it, it's a flip of a switch literally and that like i said that is what totalitar totalitarianism looks like and if he admires that well i'm sorry he should not be the leader of a democratic country and uh, he cannot by no means claim that he was democratically elected and uh, in terms of that i i just really don't know what else to say mm -hmm. but some someone's got something wrong pretty bad here mm -hmm. and i think it's trudeau 
It's fascinating, and I, I know, Ms. Anderson, the local liberal MP for Cambridge in the local media, he has condemned this event, and he went on to attack you. Uh, he said that your ideology runs contrary to Canadian values. What do you think uh, MP Brian May meant by that, that your ideology runs contrary to Canadian values? To be frank, I have no freaking clue <laughs> what he could possibly mean by that. Okay, but you know, just look at it. What exactly are Canadian values? You know, the same kind of crap we are being fed in, in Europe, European values. Okay, my understanding of European values or values of Western democracies are freedom, democracy, rule of law, individual freedom, point blank. So, and looking at these values, these are the values that I adhere to, and these are the values that I stand for, and these are the values that I will fight for, and I will make sure that all the citizens in Germany, who I represent, or the citizens and the member states of EU, who I represent, will be able to enjoy. And unless whatever values you're talking about do not match these values that I just uh, uh, talked about, then I'm sorry, you are not fighting for the values that the Western democracies are supposed to stand for. So don't give me this crap about tolerance and, you know, respect and all of that. They fill these words with uh, ideology that do not represent the core values of what Europeans and the Western world stands for, which our fathers and forefathers have fought for and spilled their blood over, literally spilled their blood over, to ensure that their children would be able to uh, enjoy these values. So do not blow my mind, do not gaslight me, do not manipulate me into thinking that these values which our society stands on suddenly means something else because it doesn't. What they are proclaiming is communism, is totalitarianism, authoritarianism, and I will never stand for that. And, and Ms. Henderson, I must ask you too that, you know, there's certainly no shortage of European countries, including Germany, where freedoms and rights are under fire. And a lot of people, including your supporters, I would argue, say, why is this German politician so concerned about what's happening in Canada? What would you say to that? Well, because it's happening all over the world. It's not just Canada, it's not just Germany, it's not just France, it's not Australia solely. It is happening in, in virtually every single Western democracy. And that is really frightening, it's scary even. Because the thing is this, if it was one or two countries going rogue, redefining values and filling in with, with another meaning uh, and, and pushing down their citizens, that would be one thing because you would have the hope that, you know, eventually another country, democratic country, would step in and put a stop to this. But that's not what we are dealing with right now. They're all in lockstep. Every single Western democracy reads of the same script. They impose the same measures, the same kind of lines like build back better and, and uh, safe and effective and, you know, the whole thing. They criticize their citizens as anti-vaxxers, as right-wing extremists, anti-science, the whole shebang. So what we're looking at is really, really scary because just ask yourselves, who is going to bail us out? Well, it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be China, it's not going to be North Korea, and it's not going to be Russia either. So who is going to do it? Well, no other country will. So what it boils down to, it is up to the people. The people have to stand up and they have to fight this. The people is all we've got at this point. And I really hope they will stand up and that's why I will never tire to command um, the, free, the Canadian freedom truckers because they were the ones taking a stance and this light traveled throughout the world and it gave so much hope to millions and millions of people. And yet it was so sad, wasn't it, the way the uh, freedom convoy was shut down a year ago oh, yeah. this month. And what was maybe even sadder 
is that a few days ago you had Justice Rollo, uh, you know, release the findings of the Emergencies Act inquiry, yeah. where he argued that at the end of the day, the government was justified. What is your take on the findings of that inquiry? Well, that is shocking, to say the least. What good does a right to assembly do? What good does freedom of speech do if you not use it to oppose and to criticize government? Then it's worthless. That's what the Canadian truckers did. Uh, Trudeau chickened out, he didn't know what to do, so he invoked the Emergencies Act. And now he was found, you know, it, it was all just and it was all uh, correct what he did. Um, that is a blow, again, to democracy. It is undermining democracy because it's actually, he has been given now a blueprint. And um, not only in Canada, but this will, you know, be a precedent in all you know, all over the world. So whenever citizens stand up to their governments, wherever that takes place, uh, and they uh, invoke an emergency act, you know, that's the, their last resort, and they will do that. And if it, it, now it's been found justified, what is keeping any other government to do just that? And I will remind you. Um, you know how the Nazis came to power? They invoked the Emergency Act. So let me tell you, have to, to give someone the power of an emergency legislation of some kind, that is a very dangerous business. And you really should not go there. Because we know it turned out really, really badly in Germany. It really did. And the people back then, we're also told it's only for your good. We're the good guys and we're doing the right thing. Well, no, it's never the good guys that try to impose things on people that the people don't want. That's a, these are the tyrants. And Ms. Anderson, this um, gathering today, uh, I find it bittersweet. And I say that because it's a celebration of the trucker convoy of last year. But here we are hundreds of kilometers away from where it took place. And the reason, of course, is that if these trucks were to assemble again in Ottawa, there'd be arrests, there'd be violence, there'd be people having their bank accounts frozen. So I, I'm just saying, Ms. Anderson, it seems sad to me that in Canada in 2023, if you want to have an anti-government demonstration, you have to do it on private property. Yeah, well, that's a big tell, isn't it? <laughs> but I will have to say, I mean, you guys have no idea how much this meant to me today that they actually organized a convoy for me you know i mean i have been standing on the sidelines and watching this and and i've i was so proud of the canadian truckers and they pulled this off for me today i got to ride in a convoy i mean seriously that was a dream come true but the thing is, um, had we done it in Ottawa, where it actually took place, yeah. you know, me participating, we might have even caused an international incident. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I mean, yeah, but it, it goes to show what Canada has come to, you know, that you have to actually retreat to private property to do something like that. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you do it. It doesn't matter how you do it. As all accounts, that the people are doing it. And that is actually, you know, another sign of uh, dictatorships, when people have to retreat to private property to organize something like that. And Canada should be very afraid if the people, I mean, these are wonderful, I mean, look at these people. They're wonderful people, you know. They're not French minority. They're not misogynist. They're not terrorists. They're not, you know, whatever label was slapped on them. I met your families and, you know, they were so loving and so receiving. And I've never been anywhere where I've been made feel so welcome. So these people are terrorists. Oh, please, seriously, give me a break. Yeah. Miss Anderson, what did it feel like to be part of the convoy? You went down the highway with the big rigs. You come to this farm. Not only do you see Canadian flags, you see the flags of Germany uh, being displayed. What did that feel like to you as a German? Oh, gosh, that is, um, I actually don't know what to say. Um, no, just, just to, you know, be part of this. 
to to experience this, to actually sit on a rig, you know, and ride in it, and having all these flags and people, you know, standing on the overpasses waving, and there, there were even, you know, people on the highway. They were like honking their uh, their horn and were waving at us. That is like, you have no idea how how that made me feel, and uh, it actually took me back to the year of '89. Oh, yes. When uh, you know Western Germany or sorry Eastern Germany GDR came crashing down, and they had to open their borders, it it took me exactly back to that uh, 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 space there. Um, it was just the people stood up, the people fought, and the government came crushing down. We may not be at that stage in Canada yet, um, and in many other countries for that matter, but uh, it's looking pretty damn good. And uh, I think um, seeing this engagement, seeing all of this, this motivation, we will prevail because freedom in the end will always prevail. And that's the mistake they're making. They just don't count on it. But trust me, freedom will always prevail. Ms. Anderson, one last question. So many people here, I would argue maybe all of the people here, they look upon you as such a refreshing breath of fresh air. You say what you mean, you mean what you say. I just want to get your opinion of a fellow German citizen, that would be Klaus Schwab, the head of the World Economic Forum. Can you, we, we just covered last month the meeting in Davos, Switzerland. Um, seemed like all kinds of behind the scenes shenanigans going on there. What is your take on Mr. Schwab and the World Economic Forum? Well, I don't know Klaus Schwab personally. I, I'm glad I don't, actually. Um, but, you know, just, just looking at him. I mean, this guy's been living in the United States for how long now? He hasn't even managed to speak a decent English. What does that say about him? So, that's point one. Um, but, I mean, I don't know whose bidding he does, but he does someone's bidding. And uh, I'm telling you, Klaus Schwab is not the guy pulling the, the strings or calling the shots. He is just a puppet. Mm. I mean, he puts his, the, his face in the camera. So, you know, he is just, you know, propagating some kind of an agenda. I don't know exactly whose agenda he's propagating. Um, because they're in the background. And I do not know who these people are. All I see is this Klaus Schwab and, you know, other politicians like Trudeau or even Ursula von der Leyen, you know. They're just standing up there and they're doing someone's bidding. But in terms of Trudeau or in terms of Ursula von der Leyen, um, she is, uh, well, Ursula von der Leyen was not elected by the people. I have to take that back. But Trudeau was elected by the Canadian people. But he does not represent the people's interest. He does not act on, in their best interest and does not act on their behalf. So, but from those people, I expect it. But Klaus Schwab, really? I mean, why are we paying this guy any, so much attention anyway? He is just propagating, you know, whatever agenda some people drew up, apparently, uh, which I'm not privy to. But um, I have a pretty good feeling what it boils down to is pretty much enslaving. And, and I'm consciously saying the word enslaving, enslaving all the people all around the world. There will be a few uh, privileged um, that do not have to eat bugs, that will still be able to fly, still own a car, and will still be allowed to leave the immediate area where they live in and not be, you know, subjected to a climate lockdown, which is what we're actually talking about right now, 15 minutes neighborhoods as a, as a, a word here. But uh, they are a part of, of some privileged, uh, but all of us here, every one of us, I mean included, we will be subjected to their rules, all in the name of saving the planet, you know, yeah. Well, Ms. Anderson, I want to thank you for your time. And the really good news is, I believe it's beef and pork on the menu tonight, yes. not crickets and mealworms. Yes. So uh, I know Claus Schwab doesn't approve, I but... <laughs> I would not have attended any event where they would have served crickets. Okay. <laughs> thank you for yeah. your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Well, folks, here we are in the countryside just outside of Hamilton, Ontario. We're covering Family Fringy Day. But you don't see any members of the mainstream media here, do you? 
Well, you know, we endeavor to bring you the other side of the story. So if you can help us out, I'd greatly appreciate that. Please go to rebelfieldreports.com. That's rebelfieldreports.com. And if you're able to, kick in a buck or three.